Good morning. Good morning, Hope. Good morning, Hope. Good morning, Hope. We praise God for another opportunity to be here in the house of the Lord and to stand before God's people. Amen. 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 We uh, greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we have a little something to say with you to you this morning. We hope, we hope that it will be encouraging. We hope that it would lift you. We hope that it would challenge you. We hope that uh, you might grow just a little bit closer in your walk with the Lord as we share with you what thus says the Lord on this morning. We've been talking about uh, anxiety, being triggered up, and anxiety this, this, this month. And this is the last of, in a series of uh, dealing with anxiety. So I, my question for you this morning, eh, my question for you is now, anybody here ever been anxious? If you have, please raise your hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all tell the truth. Amen. That's good. That's good. Y'all look good. That look good. That look good. When I was when I was looking and preparing for this last message on anxiety, uh, I, I was a little I was a little I was a little troubled, anxious. Amen. Because uh, it's it's this this one this one is dealing with being overwhelmed. Y'all say overwhelmed. overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah. This one is dealing with being over. And, and, and I had to ask myself, you know, when was the last time, Stan, you, you've been overwhelmed? I thought about it, prayed about it, and uh, I, I said, I, I really can't remember when I've been, over, I mean, sure enough, overwhelmed. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Overwhelmed. Hopefully, by the time we finish this, you'll see what I mean when, I, when I'm talking about what it means to be overwhelmed. But, but, but I looked, and, and then, then the Lord said, look, let me, let me talk to you a little bit, Stan. Let me talk to you a little bit. Let me talk to you a little bit. He said, I went to work that, that day, and, 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 and as I was going to work, you know, I had my little list of things to do. And uh, there are about three or four that I got to get. If I can get those done, I'll be all right. My days will win. You understand? But I was going to work, I went to work and I got there before I could sit down. Somebody said, oh, you got a meeting. I was like, all right, took a deep breath, adjust my schedule, put my stuff down, I rolled to the meeting. You understand, get to the meeting. I was sitting there 20, 30 minutes, I'm thinking, if I, I wish I didn't have to be at this meeting, because if I wasn't at this meeting, I'd get to my list. Amen, anybody have that happen to them? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm thinking about that and then, uh, 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 I, I, I get leave that meeting, come back to my class. I'm getting ready. The kids, kids are gonna be in 15 minutes now. And I'm getting ready, getting ready to get my stuff together, get to my list, and somebody calls up. Uh, 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 Mr. Glenn, you know we had we had a we had a meeting at 2:45 today, and I was like, God Almighty. She said, I'm going I'm going to call and see if we can adjust that, change that meeting to another day because I'm not prepared for it. And I said to myself, I'm not either. Amen. <laughs> I was glad. See, I was glad. I wasn't prepared. She, then I felt like, well, it's not just me. Then the Lord said, overwhelmed. You got so much going on that you can't overwhelm by your workload. So let me tell you another thing. Lord, I'm saying, Lord, Lord, I, I hear you now. I know what it means to be overwhelmed, but let me tell you another thing. So uh, my wife and I, we've been doing this little eating plan. We're trying to, you know, take better care of ourselves because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that right? And we got to, you know, but nobody said amen to that. Amen. <laughs> body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We got to take care of our bodies. Amen. So we are trying to do right. And uh, I, was ang I was looking forward to going to the doctor because I knew he I was going to get a good report. Amen. I knew when I jumped up on that scale, that thing was going to be a little bit lower than it was before. And I knew that he was going to say, hey, Stan, I'm glad. I'm but what are you doing, man? What are you doing? But I got in there and I sat down and he and get my, I knew my blood pressure was going to be right. Are you with me? I knew it was going to be right. And I was waiting for him to tell me, good job. But I got sat down and, you know, he said, oh, your blood pressure looks good. He didn't say nothing at all about my weight. But let me tell you what he did say. He said, Mr. Glenn, I looked at the records here and I see back down in about 2006, 2000, no, 2008, you had some heart, you had a step placement. He said, you were, 40, you, were, uh, you were 46 at the time, and that would mean 19 years ago, you had blockage, you had a 90% blockage, they had to put a stent in that main artery of your heart called the widow maker. 
He said, if you had that at age 46, you're an outlier. Good thing somebody caught that. I said, yeah, that is a good thing. But he said, if you had a stack, if you had that much blockage back then, you, and I see where you went to your cardiologist a couple years later, you had these other blockages, and there's a, you need to keep an eye on that. So I'm thinking, I'm thought, I thought he was going to tell me some good news. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But he's telling me now, you better look out for your heart. So I leave that one. Thank you, Doc. And I leave, and I'm saying, oh, shoot, now I bend down and tie my shoe, and I get a little up. Oh, what is that? Anybody ever been there? Yeah, yeah, I'm walking in the morning and I get this, oh, what is that? Oh, am, am, I, am I close enough for 911 to get to me? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Overwhelmed. Health issues. Are you with me? Not to mention, not to mention, not to mention, not to mention, when it changed our pay, we used to get paid once a month, now I get paid every two weeks, and it seems like still it's every month. Amen, somebody. And the bills keep they to come, and you can't, and you're trying to get things right and manage to get it right. You can't even get an ice cream cone when you're at one. <laughs> financial, financial. Too much. Too much. Over, overwhelmed. Anybody ever been there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm there. I, I, y'all telling the truth. Y'all telling the truth. Hey, hey, some, it's been a long time since, since we, you know, we've had an addition of birth to the family, an addition to our family. As a matter of fact, celebrating the last one went to college. Yeah, amen? Yeah. But, 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 those of you who just had a baby, you, you think, how am I going to get this? How am I going to? This is an adjustment now. This is an adjustment. In fact, I don't want to make sure I'm a good parent. I don't want to do them bad things my parents did to me. Amen. I want to be a good parent. Are y'all with me? Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Relationship. Family. Whole bunch of things. Oh, then we got the last one I'll tell you. Last one. A couple years, a couple years, a couple years. I'm ready to call this thing, call it a game. Are you understand? Throw my hat yet. I'm done. But I still am thinking I'm still going to have to pay for that little truck. And I still got this house, no. Are you with me? I mean, I want to retire and do my own thing. I still got some financial responsibilities that I got to take care of. Amen. Amen. Overwhelmed. Oh, oh, overwhelmed. When you consider all of that, sometimes life can catch us and make us all feel like it's overwhelming. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so those are those. So we all feel them. Y'all raised your hand. I got you early. You all have been in a situation where you feel like you've been over, overwhelmed. Then I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking like this week I was driving and I was thinking about Charles and Denise who lost their son. It's got to be an overwhelming situation. How do we handle being overwhelmed? What do we do when we're overwhelmed? What do we do? That, it, it, how do we handle that? Let's, we're going to take a look today, if you will, at our scripture text, which is Psalm 64. Verses, we're, going, we're going to read that. We're going to look at that and see uh, if we can find some answers uh, in how to deal with this Overwhelm this anxiety, this when when life gets to be so much worse, overwhelming. Now, hear hear me now. Hear me when I, hear me when I say. A- initially, too, part of the anxiety that I had in preparing for this was, you know, uh, uh, sometimes you know. Uh, here we go. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Y'all say, take your time, stand. Say, take your time, stand. Yeah. I hear Jesus saying, "Don't worry about anything." Do you hear me? I hear my master saying, don't worry. And right away I start to say, Lord, have mercy. I'm already messed up because my Jesus says, don't worry. But I feel that thing in my heart. That, Are you with me? I know I want to be, I want to, I want to, I want to be obedient to what the Lord says, but I just don't always get there. But let's see what let's see what happens when we read this psalm. We read this psalm right here. David penned this 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 psalm. Y'all know who David is, right? 
Yeah, David penned this. And, 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 and David, he said, we're going, I'm going to read it. And y'all read along with me, if you will. Uh, Psalm uh, 61, verses 1. We're going to read 1 through 4. Read, read, stay with me. He said, God, hear my voice when I'm in anguish. Right? And, and mine said, this CSB says, God, hear my cry. Pay attention to my prayer. I call to you from the ends of the earth when my heart is without strength. He says, lead me to a rock that is high above me, for you have been my refuge for me, a strong tower in the face of the enemy. I will dwell in your tent forever and take refuge under the shelter of your wings. This is David. This is David. To get a better understanding of, 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 of David, uh, David's perspective or where David was when he penned these words, many uh, historians, they believe that David wrote this when, uh, when he was on the run. David wrote this when uh, one of his sons, Absalom, was, was, was made himself king and kicked David out. Y'all say, what? If you want to read a good story about, you want to read a good story with a whole lot of drama. I know some of y'all like drama, isn't that right? I got you. I got you. Some of you want to read a good story. Y'all, y'all, look at, look at, look at Second Samuel. Look at Second Samuel, verse thirteen through nineteen. You talk about talk about how David, you know, he had to flee from his kingdom because his son, his son wanted the throne. So, so, so David ran. He. Let the king, now David left because his son wanted the kingdom. Hold on, listen, no, listen, stay with me, stay with me. Overwhelmed. David, the king, ran because his son wanted the kingdom. What are you going to say? I did. Well, what, 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 well, the backstory is that Absalom killed Amnon, another one of David's sons. His Absalom's half brother, if blended family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yo, ain't about know about ain't about nobody. Yeah, yeah. So watch this. So, but, but, so Amnon, Amnon, Absalom killed. Him. But Amnon raped his half sister. That's in the Bible. So Absalom, who gets mad, said, man, you're not going to rape. That's my sister. So he goes, kills his brother, the brother who raped his sister. These are all David's children. Somebody say, thank God for children. You better say, thank God for children. Help us to grow. Make us who we are. But sometimes it makes life over. What, what did David do when life got overwhelming? What should you and I do? What can we do when life gets so overwhelming? When, when our own children make us want to leave the house, amen, somebody, and go, go get an Airbnb, yeah, yeah, get in somewhere, get away. You can have a house. I want to be so Let's go somewhere, baby. Let's get away. What do you do? What do we do? David ran. He feared that his son was going to take his life. David ran. But look what he says. First thing he does, look, he says, God, hear my cry. First observation I want to share with you is when, when, when David was, was, was away from his house, away from the kingdom, a man that he's familiar with, he ran, but he still first called on God. Yeah. Y'all say, call on God. Call on God. Yeah. See, see, what happened, what tends to what happen is when, when life gets difficult, when things get challenging for us, 
we tend to, we, we can run. Anybody ever been in that running situation where you ran? Yeah, yeah, we run, right? We run, and, and, and then uh, uh, sometimes we forget, though, to call on God. They, the first thing he did in this, with this, he, David called on God. He said, God, hear my cry. Now, I heard last week, Pastor, Pastor talk about sometimes who do we call when we get in situations like that? We have situations. A lot of times we call on Google. <laughs> what did Google say about this situation? But also, look who you call, look who you call. Sometime now, I've been, it's been in my, I won't say you, but in times of anxiety in my life and overwhelm, first person I called my mama. Mom! Anybody called her mama? Call my mama. when I, I didn't think mom was going to give me the answer that I wanted. Somebody say amen. amen. So I, I would call my dad. Yes, you all stay with me. And then, then, you know, then my dad, one time I called my dad and he said, you'll figure it out. I was like, well, you were. <laughs> so I got mom and dad. And every now and then I'll call on my, 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 my pal, my buddy, my pizza, my friend. My friend going to tell me what I want to hear. Ain't that right? Yes? yes? Call on my friend. Well, I think he's my friend. We call on everybody else but God. David, first, here it says, God, hear my cry. Pay attention to my prayer. Now, verse 2, he says, well, before that, before that, he says, he says, pay attention to, to hear my cry and pay attention to my prayer. I like how David made his prayer. It was a personal. And he acknowledges where he is at. He acknowledges his condition. Listen, listen. He doesn't try to fool God and say, well, God, you know, I, I think I got this thing under on, on control. But if you would just stand by in case I need it, he doesn't say that. He says, God, hear my cry. The Lord says, slow down a minute. Hey, 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 we were talking. We were talking in group. Now, now listen, here's my, I'm putting my hand up. I know here's the thing we say. At Hope Church, we have life groups, and we meet once a week. And we say that what we say in the group does what? Save. Yeah, so I ain't going to mention no names. I just want to bring this preaching point out here for a minute. It was brought to our attention that, 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 that oftentimes uh, we feel like as men and women, we can handle things. Amen. We got it. I got this. I can handle this. I got this. Anybody ever say that? Yes, I know it's the truth. If you didn't raise your hand, you're telling the story. Amen. I got it. I got it. We were taught. I was taught to handle your business. Were you? Yeah. yeah. But, but, but I hear, I hear David David saying sometimes, so it's not my business, but it's God's. When I make my business God's business, he got that thing under control. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He said, so, 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 you know, we say we can handle it. We try to handle situations that we ought to first take to God. But David got made this thing personal. He said, hear my cry. Pay attention to my prayer. Then he says, I call to you from the ends of the earth. What's that mean? That means I'm not at home. I'm not on, it's not a home game. I'm in, I'm in an enemy's territory. Amen. I'm in territory that I'm not familiar with. See, sometimes, sometimes it, it takes us being moved away from our familiarity to a place we're not familiar with before we will even call it. But, but, but see, he said, I, I'm, I'm at the ends of earth. I, I, I'm away. I'm not where, I, you, where I'm used to being. He says, he says, and my heart is without strength. I don't know what to do. He said, I don't have any strength. He said, I need some help. He, he's talking about, he's expressing. His vulnerability. Amen. 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 See, I believe God hears the cry of the vulnerable. Amen. 
I don't like to I don't like to acknowledge or admit when I am vulnerable. But if the truth, when the truth is told, I'm more vulnerable than I am strong. I can't do anything without my Lord and Savior Jesus. Or when I do, I usually mess it up. Amen. David. David said, God, cry. Pay attention to my prayer. I call to you from the ends of the earth when my heart is without strength. Overwhelmed. We get one thought. And then we get another, and we get another, and we get another, and they go down and down and down. They just keep coming. Isn't that right? They keep coming. They keep coming. Isn't that right? Amen. That's me. They just keep going. They just keep going. They just keep going. That's overwhelm. We ever hear somebody say, I'm just at the end of my rope. I've had it up to here. David says in the second part, B part of of verse 2, he says, Lead me to a rock that is high above me. Y'all ever go swimming? Deep water? Who, if you go into the deep water, raise your hand. Oh, Jimmy, raise your hand big back there, deep water. (laughs) I mean, I don't mean just to hear we can go like that, we just jump and you get your head. I mean, like nine, ten feet, all the way down. When I was young, we, had, we used to go through the wild, right? We had the wild, we had a wild, we had a wild, and we had this black brick. And they would throw it at the bottom of the pool. You would dive down that. You grab that brick. Get, get up. Yeah, everybody, you've done that. You've done it before, right? You get that brick, go down, get down, pick it up, get up. David, when he's talking about overwhelm, when David is overwhelmed, he said, I am underwater deep. I'm 20 feet below. Help me somebody. And David said, I, I got to lead me to a rock, not just the shore. Help me somebody. But lead me to a rock that is higher than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that, that's where we need to be. See, David, see, he expresses his vulnerability, but he also knows that, I'm gonna get, Lord, I can't do it myself. You got to pull me up out of this thing. Amen, somebody. Hey, look, there's some people right here, right here, I uh, hear, I feel it right now. You, you can do all this all you want. You need somebody to pull you up. Say amen. You need somebody that's going to lift you out of that. He says, lead me to a rock. That's higher than I. We know who that rock is, and so did David. You know why? You look at that next verse, he said, he says, for you have been. Somebody say, have been. You see, David knew that, that, that this rock, amen, he knew that this God, that he knew God that to pull him up and save him from this situation was the same God that saved him from past situations, Amen. Yeah, yeah, see, that's why, that's why, see, if you've been saved, if you've been pulled up, if you've been rescued from a situation in your life, you ought to tell somebody about that, amen? Because you give them hope, you give them uh, something to hold on to, you give them knowledge, you give them a strategy on how and who can pull them up out of their situation. Somebody say amen to that. But see, you're too proud. See, you think it's just you and just you it's just by yourself. And you don't want anybody to know that you've ever been overwhelmed. But I'm trying to tell you, I've been overwhelmed. Amen. I've been overwhelmed. A whole lot of times, and every time I've called his name, amen. He's lifted me up. And so you know what? The most, the most, the, 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 the most overwhelmed I've been it was when I was in that world of sin, amen. 
when I was doing my own thing, when I thought I knew better, when I, when I could do what I wanted to do and nobody knew about it, at least I didn't think, well, but y'all know God knew what I was doing, amen? And I knew that I needed somebody to help me live this life right. Let me, let me tell you the truth. You see, the truth is, as a, as a young boy, I realized I was a sinner, need to be saved by Jesus' grace, by his blood. I needed that. But I wasn't always living like that, Amen. Yeah, yeah, I accepted Christ as my Savior, but I wasn't living like a Christian. Amen? Oh, yo, I have never done that. I don't know anybody who has, but I, I was that way. I was that way. And then I, then I started to get around some folk, and I, and I started really not to folk so much as it was God's Word. Amen? I started to realize that, hey, the way I was living was not the way that was going to please God. I, I, I'm still overwhelmed that I'm supposed to be an overcomer. Somebody say amen. I still had, was still struggling, still trying to get to the top. And, 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 all I, and I, I said I didn't believe in the one who saved me and pulled me out. Amen, somebody. But, 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 but I, need, I needed him to pull me out. And he did. And he continues to do so. David said, for you have been a refuge for me, a strong tower in the face of the enemy. I will dwell in your tent forever and take refuge under the shelter of your wings. David's prayer started with God. Is a very personal prayer, and in a prayer in which he acknowledged his condition. He was far from home. He was not, he was away from the temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed that point. Amen. He was away from the temple. He was weak and without strength. But even though his condition was a dark. Even though he was overwhelmed, even though it did not look good, he was still able to call on God. Amen. We should never be in situations in our life where we do not to God. Right. We should never be in situations where we feel like we cannot talk to God. Amen. He's just a call away. So, 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 so Stan, what, what, what are you saying, brother? What are you saying today? What, what, what do you have for me on, 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 for us on this, on, on this day? Brothers and sisters, I just stopped by to tell you this, this morning that there is security in God, that, that there is peace in God, that even though your situation might be overwhelming, you might know someone whose situation seems like it cannot be fixed, there is still a God who saves. Amen. Yeah, yeah, there is still a God who lifts up and places on a rock. There is still God, our rock, our salvation. And it's our responsibility, it's our responsibility, those who know him, who love him, who trust in him, to call on him on behalf of those, amen, and tell them that God hear my cry on behalf of this person. Look, 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 this, this week, this is what I want you to think about this week. When you are overwhelmed, the next time you're overwhelmed or you feel overwhelmed, what are you going to do? What can you do? In preparing for this, first thing I recognize is I better acknowledge when I am overwhelmed. Yeah. I believe I had that, step, that hardening of the arteries years ago because I feel like I, being overwhelmed was the way to live, amen? I live with anxiety all my life. If there wasn't anxiety, I tried to make some. Somebody say amen to that. Yeah, if there wasn't some, I tried to make what? Yeah, I, I, tried, I had to make it. If there wasn't some, I didn't feel like it was a lot. I was almost like my addiction was the anxiety. Are you with me? 
Yeah, some people, if you live with some of, some of y'all, you, if, you, if, you, if you live like me, you had to have anxiety to feel like you were alive. If there was peace, you might feel like, to, I'm, I'm dying, I'm going to die, I'm going to be with the Lord. I get that, but that's okay. <laughs> Acknowledge when you feel overwhelmed or anxious. There are degrees of, it, of, 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 of anxiousness. There are degrees of that. Yes, what I really want to get to today, too, is because David, David's anxiety caused him to run. Amen. Caused him to get away. David took some action on his part to, to leave away because he felt like his life was strained. I heard somebody say, you ever hear, hear people use that term uh, fight or flight? You ever hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you get in that fight or flight mode, amen, you're in an overwhelmed mode. Amen. You know, and here's what I don't understand. There are sometimes people that get, they look, they're in a fight and flight and it's, the, the temperature is too cold. You get that? Some people fight and flight over things that, that seem like that's not anything to be overly stressed about to me. Not to me. But just because I'm, to me it's not, it's, that, it's not something to be stressed, doesn't mean that it's not real to them. Amen? And I believe as Christians sometimes we do that. You know, we, 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 don't, let people, we don't let people express and, and stay and, and, and understand where they're at. We don't let them, we don't, we don't want them to, we don't want them to stay there, right? Because we know where we all can be, amen? But, 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 but don't, don't disregard where people are at. Guard that, amen? And then, and then understand this too. Understand this too. God knows where they are, Amen? And sometimes we have to let, we have to allow them, help us, Holy Ghost, to be right there, amen, so that they can call on his name, amen. I heard this, I heard this a lot. I heard this a lot. I'm hearing this a lot. You have to let people sometimes come, get, get, get to, to the bottom as low as they're going to get before they will call on the name of the Lord. Who was it? The prodigals? son? The prodigal son, you remember prodigal son? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, give me my money. I'm getting up out of here. And he went and he spent all, and the dad said, what did the dad say? Here you go, son. And he gave him, and he went out and he blew it, and he spent all of it, and he did, all, did his own thing. He did it, did what he wanted. But the scripture said, the story said, it wasn't until he came to him what? To himself. That then he went back to the father. I think we, a prayer we need to have for many of our brothers and sisters, amen, and even us if we're in over is, boy, Lord, Lord, help me to come to myself, amen. Help me to understand where I'm at. Help me to see where I'm at so I can go back to my Father and come back to you. Help me, Lord. Whew. Come to myself. Help him to come to themselves. They might see you, that they might call on you. Application for this week. This week, acknowledge, know when you're feeling anxious or overwhelmed. Know that. And when you are, call, start with God. I heard, I heard a young brother say, that in Alcohol Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, they have this saying. That when they have a meeting, when they close the meeting, they tell everyone, they say, when you go to bed tonight, put your shoes underneath your bed. Why, why do they say that? Because you, in your shoes, you know, you, you, get, you put your shoes on first thing in the morning when you wake up, isn't that right? Some of y'all do. Some of y'all go barefoot all the time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> put your shoes. And you put your wallets, your keys, some of y'all might lock them up depending on where you're at, amen. But you want to get down, when you wake up, you want to get down on your knees. First thing in the morning, you want to get down on your knees so that you can call on the name of the Lord. Y'all understand that? 
if you're in life group or you're here in life group, I, will, I, I want you to really commit to the very first thing you do when, you, when the Lord opens your eyes. Just call on the Lord. Call on him. The very first thing, not, not pick up, oh, what would my text say? Not, not, not call first thing. Call on the Lord. And when you see somebody next week or so, see, tell them how, what a difference that makes and how it sets the rest of your day up. First thing. First thing. Other thing I want you to remember is this scripture right here is Psalm 4610. Psalm 46, 10. I want you to memorize this. It says, be still and know that I am God. That's King James Version. Be still and know that I am God. The, the Christian Standard Version says, stop fighting and know that I am God. Be still. We have a problem in our society now with being still. Yep. Some of y'all right now have been still for 20 minutes. And you're like, would he hurry up and shut up so I can move to the next thing? <laughs> we want to move and move and move and move. We want to get to this place, get to that place. We have a problem with just, sit, just sitting down. I had an old friend of mine who used to say one of his favorite sayings was, I wish, my, I wish he would sit down somewhere. In other words, he's saying, slow, sit down, slow down. We have, you know, it's hard for us to do that, just to sit down. We always want to go, 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 go. Then we say, man, I'm tired. What could you, you had not sat down. You had not taken a rest. Be still and know that I am God. David, when he found himself in a very difficult situation, the first thing he did was call on the Lord. My challenge to you is that. Call on God. Understand, memorize, be still, and know that I'm God. And then tell somebody, set your day up right. Set, listen, even, even at night, see, to put your shoes under your bed, the night before, you're setting yourself up. Amen, somebody. To put your stuff where you know you're going to get to it, meet God and, and spend a little time with him, you're setting yourself up to have a meeting with him. Then they do that and see how that impacts your day. And share that with somebody. Anxiety is a difficult situation. Difficult emotion. My son, we had a conversation. I'm going to be quiet after this. My son, we talked. Uh, we FaceTimed about a week ago. He's coming home next week. Amen. He's coming home. Yeah, yeah, he's coming home. We FaceTimed. And at the end of the conversation, he said, Dad, I got, I got, I got a question I want to ask you. He asked me about, he want, they got a little group that they, a little accountability group. They're praying for one another. And, uh, and he was talking about one of the buddies who kind of fell off the wagon. You know, kind of fell off the wagon. You can guess what happened. He probably went to a football game and drank an uh, 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 adult beverage and he thought it was a Pepsi, amen? And he probably drank too many of them. And he kind of fell off, kind of fell off. Not, not my son now. But if it was him, he, you know, we need to keep him in prayer too. But listen, he fell off the wagon. Fell off the wagon. My son made this comment to me. I want you to hear this. He said, Dad, I ain't going to ask you to raise your hand if you've been called up. Amen? I remember one time there was a fight, and I was way back here. Look, what, 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 what? Look at it, what, what? Next thing I know, they just stand. Are you with me? I got caught up. Should have been gone. Watch yourself from getting caught up. Start your day with God. Be still and know that he's God. And there's someone here today who does not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is a fine time. This is a fine time to get rid of that over that rock. Amen. 
and they ask him to lead you out of the situation you're in. You can do that. Talk to, you can come up, talk to me, talk to Pastor Eric, talk to him, any, any, any brother, sister you know who loves the Lord right here, you tell him you want to give your life to him, that would be a time. Please don't leave this place. Don't leave this place without doing that. Somebody that you've made that decision, amen, yeah. that you've made that decision, made that decision. But I want to challenge you again. This week, start your day with God. Start your day with God. And then memorize that scripture. Be still. Sit down. 